Hello everybody, um, welcome to the next webinar. So this webinar is being delivered by Julia and Ryan from MHA Larkin Gowan on cloud accounting, managing cash and planning ahead. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask Julia or Ryan during this webinar, there's a Q&A button that you can type in your questions and we will go through those questions at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, over to you, Ryan. Thanks, Ruth. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this webinar this afternoon, where we'll be discussing cloud accountancy, the eff efficiencies and the benefits of it. These are massively uh, grown and sort of come to life right now with COVID-19 and the worldwide situation that's changed everyone's lives in the way we work, complete business and live. I'm Ryan Ebbage and I'm the digital specialist here at MHA Larkin Gowan. As many of you know, we are a firm of chartered accountants and business advisors with offices throughout Norfolk, Suffolk and North Essex. I'm primar primarily based in the Norwich office, working with all our offices and keeping them up to date with changes in the cloud accountant world, training staff, helping clients and helping them move to new systems. I've attached my Twitter handle, which you can see, which some of you might find useful as I regularly update this information and guidance. I'm also joined today by Julia Dickens and I'll let Julia introduce herself now. Hello, I'm Julia. Just a little bit about me. I'm an assistant manager in the business and private team and I'm based in Ipswich. I predominantly work on management accounts and implementing systems so clients are able to get the best use from them. Thanks, Julia. So here's the agenda for this webinar. We will be going into a good level of detail in all of the topics, but as you can imagine, we can only touch on a few key benefits in a general overview. I can guarantee, even if it's not spoken about in this 30 minute webinar, there is at least one thing everybody attending here today could benefit from, even if you're already in the cloud. We'll be holding a Q&A at the end of the webinar. Please submit your questions as we go along. We won't shut the door there, so please feel free to contact us directly if preferred, or you just have a pain point which you might just want to discuss. So to start with, I'll be looking at cloud accounting and what it is. Here are my key points to what cloud accounting is. Your accounts access anywhere. This can be at the, at the office, at home, at your in-laws, or even on holiday, if you want to, or if you can remember what a holiday is. Your accounts accessed anytime. Once again, you can get the idea. This can be at work, uh, this can be after work, this can be two o'clock in the morning, whenever you're thinking about, you should check your finances. Cost effective. We're finding that compared to maintaining the latest versions of softwares, most cloud products are on a subscription basis, which is continuously updated to the latest version. Not only that, they're accessible by all types of devices, which could be a phone, a tablet, a computer, which I believe 99% of people will have at least one of these. Also, the pricing for a subscription is very competitive compared to previous desktop versions. Account and practices are able to receive discounts with the software providers and can pass them on to their clients provide you with real-time information. This is probably the best thing to come from Cloud Accountant and I'll touch on this further on into the webinar. Integrates with hundreds of third-party apps to save you time and money. Similar to your phone app stores, even in the world of accountant, we have hundreds of third-party apps which integrate directly into your accountant softwares. This gives you time-saving abilities, forecasting abilities, and this helps you move forward. And this is just scratching the surface. I will touch on some more of this later on too. Just to run through a few stats, which are prior to COVID-19, but I'm sure the figures now would continue to back up and prove that cloud accounting is help, helping business survive and move forward in this situation we find ourselves in. 40% of businesses only survive five years. Business survival rates increased by using cloud software to 88%. Small businesses that use cloud saw an increase of 25% in additional revenue growth and 100% profits increased due to the information to be based on being key and up to date. There are three, the three stats above are pretty incredible to see the impact that it's having on new businesses. Businesses not are only surviving, but they are growing too. You'll hear me mention that a lot today, having more timely and accurate information has been one of the main benefits from cloud accounting. This has given you a clear picture of where you are at and where you're sort of predicting where you're wanting to go. You can create scenarios to make your next moves. Here's a little graph I've gone through with some of the benefits to cloud accounting. 
So you have better collaboration. You can work with your team and accountant remotely. Documents can be stored digitally and it is now easier than ever to work and share with share your information. Flexibility, working anytime or with multiple people all in the same software, which has been known in sort of historic versions that you have not been able to do so. There's advanced functionalities. This will help with every job imaginable. I'll go into sort of an individual standout of the features later on. AI technology, so working with robots. I will cover this sort of on the next slide. Data security. Online can be scary for some people, but the software is secure to bank standard security protocols. And with it being stored in the cloud, the documents are not stored on a backup or on your computer, which is easier to break into. Cost efficient, I've sort of touched on this earlier, but prices have been slashed when moving to the cloud due to maintaining versions. Also, the income gained from being more efficient should really pay for itself. Real-time information, this is probably the biggest win for me right now. With all the functionalities, you can maintain your books daily from as little as 10 to 15 minutes a day, depending on your transaction level. You can walk into pretty much any bank or situation knowing where your finances are right now and also the ability to forecast and plan, which is now more than ever important. And being compliant. Leading accountant softwares work with HMRC directly um, and they sort of tend to talk on a daily basis. This is to make sure they are compliant with the ever-changing regulations rather than have to upgrade to the next version or to find workarounds. As discussed, artificial intelligence in cloud accounting has benefited massively. The two sort of go hand in hand perfectly. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, will learn and process your unique transactions. We can teach the software when it reads or sees wording on a bank statement, for example, or a specific supplier that it knows where to place it into your books and also the VAT element of this. You can avoid time consuming data entry with the abilities above and also third party software. You can actually scan, photograph or forward on invoices and it will automatically extract and post these into your accountant software. I will attempt to demonstrate this further on in the webinar. You can also connect with your suppliers within the third party software. So once it's connected, your online account will search every seven days for a new invoice. And if there is one, that'll pull it into the third party software. And once again, if it's set up correctly, this could get posted straight into your books. Automatic, automated debt collection, stock inventory, and many more third party applications to assist in all of the sectors you may work in. We have app stacks for sectors which, for example, if you're a manufacturer, we could suggest an accounting software, an inventory software, a data extraction software, just for an example, which will then cover sort of the general pain points you could face. On a one-to-one -one basis, we'd then go into any further pain points or requests that you would want. The main benefit of introducing an app stack is that we know for, say, many manufacturers, they send a lot of purchase orders. So we can say when the stock level reaches a certain le uh, level, we want this to automatically raise a purchase order and send this off to our supplier. AI is actually more accurate than humans as well. By this, I mean, with repetitive tasks, we are all known to sort of get a little bit sloppy and accidentally type an additional zero or two. I shouldn't have to go into too much detail, as I believe from what has been spoken about, you can already see the time this will save in the office or work life. This will give you a chance to earn more money with the reduced admin or more capacity to take on more work, as you know where you are with your jobs, for example. Another sort of feature I want to touch on is sort of the most powerful ones in my eyes is the bank feeds. Most of, if not all cloud accountant software has this feature enabled. Some you may have to pay for it, but most of them you don't. What this does is allow your accountant software to receive your bank transactions daily. It is then possible in most softwares to match against outstanding invoices, for example, or post a transaction where it needs to be in your accounts, meaning you should really never ever miss a transaction in your books again. This is an accountant's dream as you can sort of reconcile the bank accounts to make sure the balance in the software on a set date, for example, is the same as the physical bank balance. You would then do this by going through and selecting all the transactions that's been ticked on the reconciliation screen. So the software has then been told all these transactions included in this figure. And then you should have a difference in the top right hand corner most of the time to say that, yes, everything's all tied in. Once you've reconciled, the transactions will then not appear again on further reconciliations, which I'll talk about a bit later on. But not only that, but for yourself, you will never miss any transactions. So you'll be able to claim all the VAT back on every transaction. And unfortunately, on some of the sort of uh, outgoings or income, you might have to pay more of that over what you might have missed in the past. Cloud accounting and COVID-19. I just wanted to run through some of the benefits that cloud accountants is having with this issue. 
So accessibility, businesses are not forced to stop due to the not being able to access your accounting systems. With it being in the cloud, the businesses that adopted early prior to COVID-19 are having no changes really in the way they work. They can invoice as normal, run their finances as normal, and it can be accessed anywhere at any time, as mentioned before. With the technology we've sort of spoke about as well, such as Receipt Bank, the docu documentation is stored in their accounts as well as a digital copy, so they don't even need to go to the office to get the paperwork. Scenario planning. We've got many partnerships with likes of Futurely, where we can sort of connect with third party applications and then we can produce the sort of business reports to forecast scenario plan and much more from which is integrated to your live data. Plans and services. Businesses are doing what, whatever they can take to still trade. Some have opened up a delivery service to keep trading. Cloud accountant supports that with its accessibility and the third party applications that you can bolt on to give your sort of software the ability to perform uh, and create a platform for customers to book an order is one example of this. Loans and payroll. C-bills, bounce back loans and furlough. These are words that no one knew existed maybe prior to COVID-19, but they are now heard daily. With cloud accounting, you can pull off reports that fetch the loan requirements in a couple of clicks. Payroll is also another sort of area we can look at. With furlough before, there was a nice calculation, which was never sort of included before, but the softwares have now been updated to help you support with your furlough processing. So you can now put in the employee, this will help with the calculation and also give you a report, which can be passed on to HMRC. I'm now going to hand over to Julia, who will talk a little bit about some of the reports the system can generate. Thanks, Ryan. So I'm going to be talking about utilising the systems that some of you will already have in place show you some simple tips and tricks which will be used to help address your cash flow. Now more than ever, it's more important to keep an eye on your cash flow to make sure that you have the funds available as and when they're needed. Many businesses will be using cloud accounting packages already due to making tax digital coming in. QuickBooks Online and Xero are the market leaders at the moment and these are the ones that we will be talking about today. Before we get into the reports, I just want to make you aware that the information is own, that comes out of the system is only as good as what you put in. For example, if the system isn't kept up to date, reports will be less current and therefore they will be less helpful. It's really key to put some time aside each day, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes, just to keep on top of it. Bank feeds that come directly into the software like Ryan has mentioned makes this a lot easier and takes a lot less time to keep your systems up to date. So moving on to some of the reports we're going to have a look at we're going to take a quick look at the banking screen we're going to have a look at the aged receivables which are also known as aged debtors depending on what type of system you use. We'll be looking at aged payables which is also known as aged creditors. And I'm also going to talk you through a monthly profit and loss. This is really a simple report that can be generated, but it can really help identify those costs that can be cut back down. So moving on to the bank screen. This is just a screenshot taken from some dummy data. And as you can see, there's a business bank account here. If you have more than one, one account, they will all be listed and you'll be able to see the, the statement balance on all of them. So on this one, the statement balance is just over 17,000. However, the balance in zero is a little bit less. Now that is because there's 28 items on here that need reconciling. And as Ryan mentioned, you just go through and allocate those, and then those two numbers will match. So now we know the starting position and what cash we've got we can move on to the aged receivables. This again is just a report that's generated from the system, but it is so valuable when looking at what money you can call in. So first things first, I would start by looking at the debt that is aging. So as you can see here, they're in columns of current and then monthly and how old they get. So start with the older ones and just contact them 
maybe send them some copy invoices which can be done straight from the system. You can also send them statements straight from the system and they'll be able to see a breakdown of what invoices are outstanding and when they became due. That would be my first starting place. And then I would always try and follow it up with a phone call. It's much better to talk about these things openly and it's a lot harder for your customers to ignore a phone call rather than putting an email to, to the side to deal with another day. You're far more likely to get much better results by just having that conversation and keeping the communication going. Don't feel that you can only contact the older invoices as well. Here we have some in the current ones which might not be due yet, but you could be calling them and seeing A, whether they can make the payment terms you've got in place with them, or you could even try and agree new terms, maybe 20% up front. Again, it's just having that conversation to see what money you can bring into your business. So now we're going to move on to the aged payables. And again, we're just going to apply a similar logic here. This shows similar things, how what invoices are outstanding, but this will be invoices that you owe. And it also shows how old they're getting. So again, I would start with the older ones. Have a look. Are they overdue or will they be becoming due? Have you got the funds to pay it? If you haven't, then maybe call them, make contact. Be open and honest now rather than keep ignoring those demands for payments. They might be able to offer you more flexibility on those payment terms. You may also be aware of the new legislation for landlords not being able to evict you. So if there are ones on there for rent, you can have those conversations with your landlord, but you can have the confidence that no, that you know you won't get evicted. By all means, make payment where you can, but at least this gives you the option to have the flexibility and the conversations with them. You can also use this one to prioritise your suppliers on who needs paying first. If you're still trading, there might be some suppliers that you're relying on and therefore you may need to keep that payment up to date depending on the terms you've agreed with them. Equally, by having those conversations sooner rather than later, you're far more likely to have productive conversations and being open and honest, it's likely to preserve those relationships for when things start to turn back to normal. Another thing you could do is you could run a supplier report from the system. This will show your activity with them for say the past year or however long you want to run it for. If you're a big customer of theirs, you could use this as leverage to negotiate flexibility on your payment terms. Another thing to consider would be those suppliers that are on direct debit. Make sure that you have factored those into your cash flow so that you're comfortable with when they will be taken out of the bank. Are they necessary? Review your direct debits. We're all guilty of setting up direct debits and then forgetting about them. But now is a really good time to have a sit down, review those direct debits and make sure that they are still necessary and they are still relevant. Just whilst I'm on the topic of direct debits, you may also be aware of the VAT deferment scheme that's in place at the moment which means that you do not have to pay your VAT liability until March 2021. If you want to make use of that and you currently pay by direct debit, you do need to temporarily cancel that, otherwise HMRC will attempt to take payment. So moving on to the profit and loss, this is one that I've just run for three months, but you, you can run it for as long as you like. Um, the more information you have, the better. If you could do a full year, then great. But it's really just going to help you identify those variable costs that you can make cutbacks on. So on here, I've circled advertising and marketing. Over the next few months, depending on your business, is that a cost that you can save some money on? Will it be going down? Will you, is that an expense that you can reduce? 
similarly with entertainment there's not a lot of that going on at the moment so if that is usually a big expense for your business then you will be saving money there as well and again that's these are the sorts of things that you need to take into consideration when coming up with your cash flow travel is another one but you must remember that every business is different so it won't be the same for all of you you will just need to run your own profit and loss and have a look down scan down and see which costs you can identify for your business that you can make cutbacks on so what if you don't have a system in place there are still things you can do um, you can look through unpaid sales invoices again call call the customers speak to them can they make payment any sooner or even if it's just giving you a date that they're likely to pay at least you can factor that in you could compile a list of unpaid purchase invoices again if you don't think that you're going to be able to make payment within the terms call them have that conversation with them you could also just run through your latest bank statements familiarize yourself with the outgoings and when they are taken so that there are no surprises along the way you could still look at what direct debits you have in place and whilst you may not be able to run a monthly profit and loss you could always review your latest set of accounts and run through the profit and loss in there so i'm now going to hand back to ryan thanks julia um, i'm now going to sort of look through the advanced features and sort of spotlight a few which i think are key and everyone here can benefit from today so to start with, here are my five key features. All of these are available on all account and software packages. Um, just to give you a bit of a heads up, I'll be using this account and software QuickBooks for all my images, um, similar to what Julia's gone through, I'm going to show an image and just talk you through it. But if you are considering using another piece of software such as Zero, Sage, Free Agent, uh, just to name a few of them, they all have this type of functionality or something very similar. I just wanted to keep it sort of on one software so I'm not going to confuse anyone or even myself. <laughs> so to start with, we're going to look at the business overview or the client facing dashboard. On all of your softwares, 99% of the time, you will land on a page like this, um, some sort of dashboard. This is perfect as from a quick view, I can know where my finances are instantly, who owes me, who, what I owe, and then also all these figures you can click, to, click into and drill into. They're normally shown with a good visual, and as I just mentioned, all of these you can click into and sort of get a detailed breakdown of what makes up that figure. This is perfect for on-the-go accounting, as this shows sort of even where you are on a mobile device. So you could be out sort of speaking to a client. You can click um, to your sort of overdue invoices and load it up that way. You could be working with your team and they can give you a call and just sort of say everything's up to date and as you can just log straight in. Bank feeds, we've sort of touched on this quite a few times, but I wanted to give you a quick view of what some of the bank feeds can look like. As you can see on here, we're given a statement like screen with key areas such as date, description, spent and received. There's a few more categories in here, such as payee, category and VAT. And these are for us to enter and review. And once happy, the transaction will be posted into our accounts. And this just helps us identify and sort of categorize things. The beauty of this is we can set up automated tools such as bank rules. And as you can see from the second transaction from the bottom on this image, there is a sort of rule set in place called interest paid. So what this is, is when the software reads interest on the bank statement, it will apply the rule. This categorizer is it into the interest paid category and also with no VAT ready for me to add straight into my books once I'm happy. You will also see the ability to match payments. For example, the bottom transaction on the list, the software can see we've received 105 pound and we also have a payment in the software for the same amount. It's then giving you that option to sort of review and match it. And once you click that, that'll just allocate the money to that payment and that line will disappear. As we're talking about bank fees, we're going to the bank rec reconciliation. So a very quick run through on how the bank rec works. Here you can see I've entered my end and balance to be negative 829 pound and 65 pence. I've gone through and ticked all the transactions in this period. And with them all being ticked, it's given me a difference of zero pounds in the top right hand corner. I am then able to reconcile and mark these transactions as reconciled. As described earlier, once they've been marked as reconciled, they will not appear on future reconciliations. 
with this being such a small job, we find a lot with a new client, a lot with our new clients that they do not complete this, but it's so easy to do, sort of complete. And not only that, it stops any duplications or other errors being shown. I'd recommend reconciling at least once a month, but it's known for people now to be doing it daily against their online banking. Obviously being kept up to date with real time information, you're able to do this. Here is the invoice setup. In here, we're e easily able to create a new invoice on any device and also set up the option to get a payment online. The options within QuickBooks are either PayPal or GoCardless that you can connect and integrate with. We'll start with the payment options. So with PayPal, you can connect with this with your PayPal account into the software. Once you send out an invoice to your customer, they can review, view it online. They'll also get a pay now button appear. They're able to click onto this and even if they don't have a PayPal account, they can sort of pay with their card details or straight through their PayPal account if they do have one. And this is proven to get you paid faster. Go Cardless is another option. Go Cardless is a direct debit service. This is beneficial, obviously, if you have recurring amounts that need to be charged every month. And this is all generated automatically once set up. They'll also be sent a direct debit mandate, which they have to sign. The creation of an invoice is nice and easy. You fill in the boxes from left to right. Once again, you can set up a recurring invoice, even if you don't want it to be sent out. Once it's been sort of automatically generated, it can be sent through the softwares and it'll be sent straight to their email inbox. And you can also update it with your own personalized templates. Having your sales ledger involved in the software is great for the reports, as Julie has mentioned, and not missing invoices that could be sort of written out and not to put into your books. Once it's been sent to the customers, you know that you're going to be able to chase it and get paid. And right now, with everything going on, cash flow is more important than ever. And this is another simple but effective function within the software is to get you paid faster. VAT and CIS is all calculated from the transactions entered. Historical returns are in here as well, so you can pull off detailed reports per each return and then be able to review it and make sure that nothing is wrong. You are given running totals as the sort of period is involved, and this is a live figure. So any transactions that you add or adjust will automatically be adjusted, and this figure will show you that you would do a refund for now on this image, but it could be the case of you watching what your liability is and planning for that. VAT returns are now not things you just put off until the last minute, well, unless you had a refund anyway. But with real-time information, we are submitting VAT returns for our clients the day after the return has ended. This is great because then they can get an additional, say, a month and seven days to know what they have to pay, or we can get that refund into their bank account quicker. I'm going to talk about a new bit of software or show you an image of a new piece of software called Receipt Bank. So due to the time reasons, I've tried to summarize it in one photo, but um, I won't be able to do it justice for all the features you get. But this is the best one. So on the left hand side is an image I forward on from an, e an email from one of my suppliers, which is MHA Larkin Gowan. Once the software has received the email, it can see the attachment, extracts the attachment and the information and presents it on the right hand side of this image. As you can see, it has extracted what type of document it is, the date, the supplier, the invoice number and the amount and tax code. It's pretty amazing how much it can just get off an image. You can set up a supplier rule. So for example, once it reads MHA Larkin Gowan, it will put it in the legal and professional fees category along with any other information you want it to have. You can put in word, specific word in and description. You can then split it down to different locations or different people by using things called classes or locations. With this, you can turn on the auto publish as well. So once it's already coded up, that can get pumped straight into your account and software without any human input. This piece of software is time a time saving tool that can be used by all businesses who receive purchase invoices or receipts. You can also create expense reports within this as well. Receipt Bank has a ton of additional features and I'll be more than happy to talk this through with you on a one-to-one -one basis or a one-to-team basis. If this benefits you, which I can't see at one. So in summary, I just wanted to you to realise the time-saving abilities the cloud has to offer. The support it is given to our businesses in this unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. If moving to the cloud can help you in your work life, please get the ball rolling as soon as you can. It will also have benefits on your personal life too from system rep repetitive jobs to get that stress and bother off your head, but also give you that sort of reflection and ability to know where your finances are and to move forward. I will now pass on to my colleague, Julia, who will talk 
little bit more about how you can move and when you should do this. So I'm just going to touch base with those of you that are looking to migrate software. So if you've got some software already and you're using desktop software, but you're looking to move to a cloud accounting package, we do here at MHA Larkin Gowan have experience of moving clients over to cloud packages and we are help, happy to help with this process. Some of you may have concerns regarding loss of historical data but we can move across the previous year so there are comparatives within the system. This is valuable information, especially when utilising the reports that can be generated from the packages. Alternatively, there are a few people who would just like a clean slate and not bring the unused nominal accounts and customer accounts to the new package. In this case, you can simply import the customer and supply details that you do want and just start input, inputting data. Timing is key to ensure a smooth process. So if you have VAT returns coming up for submission, it is best to wait until these have been completed and reconciled. Similarly, just after the year end can also be a good time to move. Whilst this can make it easier, it still can be done mid-year and I have had a few clients that have moved mid-year and it's been absolutely fine, providing bank accounts, control accounts are all reconciled. So I hope that gives you an insight into the benefits of cloud accounting and the process to switch to such packages. But if you would like any further information on this, please feel free to make contact and I will be happy to assist. We've now got a few minutes to take any questions. If you'd like to submit any you have, we will work through as many as we can. Cheers, Julia. Um, I just want to give a bit of a shout. I think we've uh, gone a little bit quicker than we planned. But um, as Julia said, we're more than happy to take questions right now or on a personal one-to-one -one basis via email, phone call or any other platform that you, will sort of suit you better. Thanks, folks. That's been really interesting to hear um, about cloud accounting. I think you're also offering an hour's consultation if people need to discuss in more detail um, on a one-to-one -one basis as an offer, which is really fantastic for small businesses who might be thinking about moving to cloud accounting. So that's great. Um, yeah, that's correct. Anyone, anyone who sort of wants to have a sort of one-to-one -one consultation, please yeah. touch and we'll uh, be more than happy to sort of help you in any way we can. I had a question for you. So if you were a, a small startup, I, I expect most startups will start with spreadsheets, right? At what yeah. point do they need to kind of like grow up and start using something like the packages that you've discussed? Do you know what, what are the points where it's sort of a tipping point that you experience with the smaller business? Did you want to give this a go, Julia, or are you happy for yeah. me to answer? No, yeah. that's fine. Um, to be honest, we will always suggest using the cloud packages, even if you're a small startup business as well, um, just because the additional reports and things like that it can offer is valuable even to those, one, those small businesses, especially when they're starting up and starting to grow. So we would advise to use it as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll just I'll follow on as as the sort of third or fourth slide in with the stats. You just saw how, what the percentage was of new startups surviving. So um, yeah, as Julia sort of said, it's beneficial for them because they can see where they are. Where and then we can also assist with sort of cash flow forecasting, um, sort of predicting where they want to go, how they're going to get there, put scenarios in place. Saying if we took on um, this new sort of purchase supplier that's going to cost us an extra hundred pound a month. And then we can build on where they're going to be sat in 12 months time up to 10 years. So um, we can sort of build all that in rather than using a spreadsheet, which is obviously uh, could be prone to error, could be prone to things being missed. Um, and not only that, it's just uh, having a digital copy. You sort of got your backup that if you accidentally ever deleted that spreadsheet, you're not going to be uh, spending all night retyping it all. Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose all their data, do they? No, we've had fun doing that before. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. So presumably you work in a partnership with businesses in that some, some people may be doing a lot of their own reconciliation, but do you also 
offer that as a service or do you figure out how do you work it out with the business how much support they need i guess is my question yeah um i'll jump on this julia if you want you can always follow up but um that's really dependent on the client's desires i mean some people like to get a firm grip and do it all themselves know where they are um potentially you'll see that and we'll review um it's just really on a it's a business by business or person by person uh, person case um some people as i said want to do it themselves some people want to give us everything and we'll do it provide them with the information or as i said we'll do the reviews we can have monthly sort of chats or management accounts sent out to them it's really just how much support they want and then obviously we'll have a catch-up consultation and sort of say well actually have you thought of this or we can see from your data you've done xyz how about if you've done this a little bit differently we can just give them sort of our advisory heads and sort of say hang on a second we can help you in this way and move forward yeah and also some clients set out maybe to do it themselves but then end up handing it over to us so they can concentrate more on the business or the other way where we have been more involved at the beginning but as they get to grips with the software they take take it back off us as well so there's always flexibility there as well and I guess that's one of the beauties of the cloud software is that you don't have to physically go into their office to use their accounts package anymore. You can just log in. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's also if they get stuck, we can see the same thing. So they can just give us a call and we can see and talk them through it. Yeah, great. I mean, some people think that having things moved to the cloud means that I'll no longer need to have that professional expense because I can do it all myself. But my experience has been, well, A, I'm not that interested in accounting, but B, also there's so much I don't know. And the, having that expert that you can go to and say, actually, can you just check I've done this right? Or, you know, should I be doing it this way or that way? It's just such a good thing to have as peace of mind when you're running a business, I feel as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've also tried making their, well, with these apps, account a little bit more exciting. Uh, sort of bit we've sort of touched on a little bit today is the forecasting um, and different sort of features we can now do. Some of that stuff is really cool. So you sort of have your one-to-ones with your client and we're then predicting um, how they can sort of spend more money, but then see what it is on the long-term goal of sort of the effects of the cash flow. But then also what about if we had a new client who's going to bring, say, an extra 10 grand a year in, and then sort of then build in scenarios and what that what we can do with that extra 10 grand and go sort of that way that's uh with cloud account has given us that ability to have them chats to have them plans and to move forward as sort of a well as us part of the business really that's where we're sort of now getting involved at yeah do you think it's making business owners more financially savvy because their information is at their fingertips and they don't need to have a degree in accounting to understand it um, I would like to say yes, but as Julia pointed out, that rubbish in will give you rubbish out. So it is key that if you have got queries to ask them, uh, do your reconciliations, don't let things build up. Um, not only that, ask your, your accountants there to help you, advise you. Um, they want to be involved, so it's just ask the question and sort of build that relationship up. Um, and we're here to help. So if you are worried about a VAT code or if you're worried about why we're reporting, saying something, ask the question um as you said earlier we can jump straight into your account system we can sort of see it there and then we can then advise and move forward and give you the sort of advice you want yeah yeah one of the questions that's just popped up is about um the fact that you can import data from your bank statements i mean that must be a huge benefit to people from what we used to have to do yeah so usually if you got given a, a pile of bank statements, we might have to sit there and type it all up. But what you can do is utilize Receipt Bank and it will put that into a Excel format and that can be directly imported into the cloud packages and treated like a bank feed and you just analyze the transactions and that saves loads of time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's just taking it. If you haven't got your bank feeds connected, there is still ways to use the bank statements to get the information in. So you're not missing transactions. So you're claiming all of that back. And more importantly to some people, you're paying all the stuff you should be over to HMRC. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's great. I don't think we've got any more questions. So I just want to say a big thank you to Ryan and Julia from MHA and Lock and Go. And it's been really interesting hearing how things are developing with Hyde Accounting and how businesses can use that to um, better manage their finances, I guess, and how they can work with you collaboratively. So thank yeah, you very excellent. much yeah. for your time. You're welcome. Thank you no for problems. having us. Yes, thank you. And as mentioned, there is an offer of an hour's free consultation to discuss your accounting needs. If you are watching this later, um, you can drop it via an email. You'll get the information by email after the summit closes, if you would like to take them up on that. So thank you very much, folks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a great day. And you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.